more than 5,000 feet above sea level on the cliffs of the Ethiopian mountain ranges. You'll find a creature with enormous canines and the markings of a bleeding heart. If you think this primate is a bloodthirsty, carnivorous predator with an innate desire to kill you, you'd be dead wrong. This social creature eats grass like a cow, yet chatters in unique speech patterns like a human. This is the gelada. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. If you want to see geladas, there's only one place that you can go. Their ancestors once ruled over parts of Africa and India, but today, these fearsome monkeys only survive in Ethiopia. Before we go any further, I'm so excited to tell you about our brand new long-form documentary, Strange Creatures of the Arctic, which is streaming right now exclusively on today's episode sponsor, Magellan TV. Welcome to the set of Animal Logic. In this hour-long documentary, I investigate the evolutionary adaptations of the astonishing animals who live in some of the Earth's harshest environments, the Arctic and Subarctic. We shot on location on two continents, and the documentary features five of the most amazing species you'll ever see. From Japanese macaques who've discovered they can use hot springs to warm up in harsh mountain winters, to Siberian musk deer who've evolved to survive on some of the least nutritious food on Earth, to wolverines whose acute sense of smell helps them find prey buried under several feet of snow, and so much more. You can stream Strange Creatures of the Arctic right now, as well as over 3,000 other documentaries on Magellan TV. Plus, Animal Logic viewers will get a one-month free trial by clicking on the link in the description. We really hope you enjoy watching the documentary as much as we enjoyed making it. And after you're done, keep watching Magellan TV for more amazing shows, with new documentaries being added every week. Thanks, Magellan TV! Also known as the bleeding heart monkey or the gelada baboon, the gelada technically isn't a baboon at all. The gelada is part of its own genus, the Theropithecus family, and is actually the only living member of this exclusive club. The species is divided into two subspecies, the northern and southern gelada. There are so few differences between the two groups, researchers question whether they should even be considered two separate subspecies at all. Males typically weigh up to 20 kilograms, while females typically are about half of that. Their weight makes them lousy tree climbers, so these primates spend the majority of their time on the ground. In fact, gelatas are the second most terrestrial primates in the world. Second only to, you guessed it, humans. But unlike humans, the gelata's diet consists primarily of grass. An impressive 90% of their diet is grass, and they are the only primate to eat this way. The gelada's diet closely resembles that of a horse, though the gelada's digestive tract is nowhere near as long and complex. Instead, gelatas rely on a particular microbiota in their digestive tract to extract the necessary nutrients from grass. Since gelatas are less efficient than ungulates at extracting protein from their diet, Gelatas can be found grazing for over 10 hours a day in order to get their fix. They employ a unique shuffle step while eating that is different from the quadrupedal gait they use while walking or running. While grazing, gelatas squat down on two feet, feed with their hands, and then shuffle bipedally without really changing their stance. This allows for almost continuous foraging and feeding. So, would we call that the biped shuffle? The gelata scoot? Either way, these grass-loving primates sure know how to bust a move when they're hungry. They have short, powerful fingers that not only help them pluck yummy blades of grass, but are also used to dig for nutritious roots, with highly opposable index fingers and thumbs. So if these herbivores don't use their enormous teeth for tearing flesh, then what else are these great big fangs used for? Mainly intimidation and defense. 
threat displays are common in geladas, where they curl their upper lip over their nose, exposing their gums and teeth. Geladas also have pale eyelids that sharply contrast with their dark facial fur when retracted in aggression. A winning smile and piercing eyes aren't the gelada's only stylish attributes. When it comes to looks, the gelada absolutely dresses to impress. Male geladas have dark, coarse fur around their shoulders, chest, and back that resembles a fabulous furry cape. Not to be outdone, females have pearl-like knobs of skin on their chest that fill with fluid to look like a necklace. Oh, you fancy, huh, geladas? Sorry about that, I was feeling a tad underdressed. Now where was I? Oh right, the gelada's crown jewel of their fancy getup. It's their characteristic red marking found on their chest, which is also where they got the name Bleeding Heart Monkey. Both males and females have a hairless, hourglass-shaped patch of skin located on their chest. The color can range from a racer pink to a fiery hot red. The color of the marking signifies different things for both males and females, and it changes based on hormone levels. In males, the patch of skin will become redder based on a higher social status. A dark red would indicate a group leader with a high rate of reproductive success, while a more pink color would indicate a bachelor or caretaker. In females, the color signals their current reproductive stage, though the color is also affected by age and recent activity. The beads of skin surrounding the hourglass patch will also fill with fluid when females are ready to mate. This is one way in which geladas and baboons differ. While female baboons have bottoms that swell and turn red to indicate readiness to mate, female geladas are flat bottom ladies with no such thing. It's possible that this is an evolutionary result of geladas spending so much time grazing with their behinds directly facing the ground. With the hourglass patch on their chest, female geladas can indicate sexual readiness in a way that their male counterparts can easily see. Geladas generally give birth to one infant at a time and then groom and protect them until they're independent. Baby geladas are born with cute little pointy ears that will later be covered with fur as they grow into adulthood. Gelada infants are extremely social. They love to play fight and mock bite, but these actions are always accompanied by a certain face or grin to indicate play. They also constantly mimic their mother's facial expressions. Geladas live in complex societies with family groups. Herds can be absolutely enormous, with over 600 individuals. That's a whole lot of gelada. Herds are made up of several groups. Most groups are composed of one male gelada who acts as the group leader, several female geladas who mate with the leader, and their young. Other typical groupings are all-male bachelor groups who at times challenge male group leaders for power, hence the need for threat displays and intimidation. Cut to enormous canines. A fight between two male geladas can last up to three days. If a male bachelor successfully challenges a leader male, the bachelor becomes the new leader and gains exclusive reproductive access to the females in the unit. Geladas are also known for their intricate, speech-like vocalizations. The unique chattering sounds they make are often combined into different sequences, almost as if they're forming a sentence. With a diverse set of cries, barks, calls, squeals and grunts, the gelada has one of the most varied vocal repertoires among all primates. Geladas even use a unique combination of lip smacking and vocalization to produce a sound called a wobble. Researchers have said that the wobble has a similar rhythm to that of human speech pattern and is always used in a friendly context. <laughs> Aside from all the chatter, geladas also use complex facial expressions to communicate and spend some time each day socializing by grooming each other. After a long day of grazing, chattering, and grooming, geladas sleep on cliffs, because why wouldn't they? 
Cliffs provide both shelter from predators and a place to rest their heads. Plus, the most palatable grasses grow at higher altitudes, making the Ethiopian cliffside the place to be. The lifespan of gelatas in the wild is approximately 14 years. However, the gelatas' homes are currently being eroded by human population growth and agricultural expansion in the Ethiopian highlands. Climate change also poses a threat to gelata populations, especially those that live at higher elevations. Though gelatas used to be hunted for their impressive furs, today, gelatas are protected within the Simeon Mountains National Park. Don't forget, you can watch our new documentary, Strange Creatures of the Arctic, which is streaming right now on Magellan TV. If you live in Canada, you can also catch the premiere on TV on BBC Earth on August 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern. It will also be streaming in Canada on the BBC Earth Amazon Prime channel on the same day, and you can watch with a free trial. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya!